Hello, welcome back to school. Um, it is almost 2200 hours. Um, I am going to do a quick, hopefully a quick, uh, thing talking about, um, why, what we're doing for Braille. Um, we are starting to establish, uh, some structure, <laughs> which is good. Um, but you know, with any great edifice, um, if you don't have a good foundation, um, the edifice is, is going to fall. It's just going to fall. Uh, yeah. And we don't want this edifice to fall. <laughs> so, um, we spent quite a few, few days talking about structure, what we're going to do, how we're going to do and things like that. So, um, Time well spent, but now we are starting to slowly incorporate actual work, like studies and homework and things like that. Um, so today we did Braille, um, and it was a lot of work in class. We did a pretty lengthy review, which um, was okay. I mean, you know, there's some symbols that I just didn't know. Um, but other than that, I mean, it was pretty good. Um, I think I got like an 80 something, like a low 80 something percent on this test or review, whatever he wants to call it. Um, but yeah. And then after that, we did, uh, uh, some, a couple lessons in what we're going to be working through. Um, so before we were working, we were just doing reading through the, uh, a book called the Illinois Braille series or something like that. Um, it's the one that has Lincoln on the cover. Let me pull that out. It was this book. Uh, I don't know if you could. Yeah. It was this book that we were working through. So one of the things. As I walk away. <laughs> so one of the things I noticed. As I was going through that with teacher. Um, was. When we ran across a word, or when I ran across a word, and I didn't know how how to say it, like I didn't know how the letters, you know, sounded out to make the word, I got really frustrated. And then teacher would say, well, read the word. It's like, well, I'm trying to read the word, <laughs> you know, but I don't know how the letters go to make the sound to make the word correct. Um, and so it, I mean, I could read the individual letters like, um, B A T. This is a really easy example, but I could read the letters B A T. But if I had a, uh, I would have a hard time with taking those letters and putting the sounds with them. Like I might, again, this is just an example. I might say bait because you got an A. That middle letter is an A. It's like, oh, well, that's an A, so it's going to say A. But if I don't know what that letter says, if I don't know that that middle letter says A, then I'm going to mispronounce the word regardless how many times I try to pronounce it. Uh, granted, there's only so many options, <laughs> but you're just basically shooting arrows in the dark and you don't know where the bowseye is to get the, um, you know, hit it on the target. Um, so I, I, I was frustrated about that. Um, and on top of that, it was, it was basically a book that teaches the Braille code. Like it taught you the letters, it taught you the numbers, it taught you the different um, contractions, which I know we didn't get that far, but 
volume two did, you know, go through and teaches all the contractions and stuff. Um, but it doesn't teach literacy. It doesn't teach a student how to read um, actual material. It just teaches you, oh, well, this is, you know, these dots make up the word the, or these dots make up the word not, or these dots make up the word mother. It wasn't really teaching true reading. It was basically teaching a code about how to read, but it wasn't teaching true literacy reading. Um, that's one of the things that I really do not like about, like, some of the Braille programs and things that I have went through is that they don't teach reading, they just teach you the code. And then they say, oh, all you got to do is just read books. Like, well, if you don't know how to sound out the words, then you're not going to have a real fun time reading because, you know, reading is hard. <laughs> um, so, um, when, when I was learning to read in print, um, I, like most students going through the, uh, state schools, public schools, um, I wasn't learned phonics. Like, I probably was taught a little bit, but I remember there being pictures in the books, like the A had the apple, the B had the banana or the boat, the C had the cat, the D had a door, you know, just, or a dog. I mean, just all this, you know, simple stuff. The E had the egg. You had these pictures that went with these letters and from my experience I just looked at the pretty pictures like oh well that's a really nice apple <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the actual phonetics of the word I couldn't tell you why the a or why apple was spelt the way it was I was just looking at the picture oh that's a pretty picture but um, yeah, so that was how I learned. And once I got out of those books, I would look at the shape of the word. Like, let's say, what? W-H-A-T. I would look at that word and I would just memorize those letters as the sound what. And if I came across a new word, like let's say it had what and ever next to it, whatever. If I came across that word, that would be a totally different picture like in my brain. I may not even recognize that what is even in there because I'm just memorizing the whole picture. Whatever is a, like, it would be like a picture in my brain to say, okay, this group of this picture of letters make the word or make the sound whatever. Um, and so that's how I would go across with my reading. If I came across a word that I didn't know how to pronounce, I had a heck of a time trying to pronounce it. Um, I was taught, oh, well, if you don't know it, just skip it and context clues will, you know, it should help you figure out what it is. Most of the time, it didn't help me. <laughs> um, if it came across like names, um, that was basically even worse because I was told, well, just skip it. It's a name. You, do, you could just put in May for, you know, whatever that name is or whatnot. It don't, it don't matter because it's just a name. So I was basically told that you could just skip words um, memorize words as pictures and basically fill in, um, you know, I don't know, George Washington for Mary Jane. I mean, that's how, I mean, yeah. Um, 
So obviously I would be reading something about George Washington and just change the name to Mary Jane. And yeah, totally be screwed up that way. Um, but anyways, so that's my reading history kind of with phonics or I should say lack thereof. Um, so in my research before, um, you know, just, I've done a lot of research into, um, different education programs that are like dirt cheap or free. <laughs> um, and one of them I found, which is actually used a lot by home schooling parents is this book. And this is not to say if you complete this book, you can pick up War and Peace. Um, there, this book is basically like learning your arithmetic tables. Um, this would be like learning the phonetics for reading. You can't read books until you know the phonetic, phonetic, phonics, the sounds of the letters and how they make those letter sounds. Um, just like you can't do higher levels of maths without knowing arithmetic and the basic branches thereof. Um, and just like with music, you can't read music until you know what a crotchet is and what a quaver is and what, you know, what the staff looks like, or in my case, what do re mi looks like in braille. Um, so there's all that stuff going on. There's always foundation stuff that needs to be built before the actual reading of anything can happen. Um, and so that's kind of where, where that's at. So I ran across this book and, um, I found some other really helpful resources online. Um, uh, so that we can actually keep track and, you know, monitor and see what, how things are going with this. Um, so, um, one of the things, uh, this book teaches is obviously phonics. It teaches students how to read using phonics. So like, obviously the first thing is to teach the letters. Um, coming at this from a braille perspective, <laughs> uh, yep. I would say that I know the braille letters. I can read braille letters. I can identify braille letters. Um, I may not be able to identify all the contractions, but I can read the basic 26 letters um, and a couple punctuations, the capital sign for sure, and the full stop or the period, uh, the ex exclamation mark and the question mark. Um, those That's pretty much the extent of my fluency in reading like just identifying these characters. Um, oh, the comma and the apostrophe too, I'm uh, acquainted with. I'm saying acquainted with, not very fluent, but yeah. Um, so having a bare bone basics of the alphabet is where you start off. So once a student has the bare bone foundations of the alphabet, they then venture into this book. And this book is not a pretty book. This, I mean, it looks really pretty on the outside, but once you go inside this book, it it's literally, it's like hell. Um, let me find a, a good page here. Here, here's a, here, here's a page. Here's a couple pages. Literally, the whole book is a bunch of sentences and words. Um... And it contains, like the whole book, there's no pictures at all in here. It's just sentences and words. Um, well, that's all teacher's information. Here's like the back couple lessons. <laughs> yeah. 
sentences and words. If there is some kind of a logic to this. Um, I'd have to study the first. I mean, I have to figure out. Like, I know the first 14 deal with the short A. Or is it the first 7? I think it's the first 14. I'm not sure. But they spend a lot of time with the short vowels. I don't know why. But... That's just what they do. Um, so this is here. This is the lesson. One of the lessons we did in class. Um, and then this, these were the other two. We did two and three. Um, but basically, you that's what you're doing. is You're just reading a bunch of words and sentences. Um, and obviously as the book goes on, you get more in depth with your sentences. Um, but like, so what we're doing with a Braille perspective going on here is, um, because I have, this book is not available in Braille, at least to the best of my knowledge. A lot of the books that I, that we're using are not in Braille. So if I need a Braille copy, I need to actually make it myself. Uh, um, so what we're doing is we're kind of approaching it a little differently. Uh, most students would pick up the book and they would start reading a n an. Um, but then like they have that book right there. Whereas me, I don't have this in braille. So what we do is we do dictation um, before we, we do the actual reading. And it's kind of good because, um, it will actually make sure that I'm writing stuff correctly. Uh, and you know, if, yeah, I mean, reading and writing go together hand in hand. But, um, so we are doing dictation. Teacher will read out the letters and the words, and then, um, I will, write them in Braille and then at the end of the lesson I will go back and I'll read what I wrote um, and we'll just continue through that way. Um, now for homework we're basically just I will just be redoing the lessons. Obviously I want to teach it next to me but I will basically be writing out the lessons, um, and then I will then read them. And obviously the first several lessons are going to be like super, super easy, but there's a lot of things that are happening with the actual learning process. Although like intellectually, I know that SAT says the word SAT, but there's a lot of stuff going on with the brain that's really important that's going on, you know, at from the fingertip point of view with the Braille. So when a student is learning how to read, um, they are taking a symbol and they are associ associating that symbol with a sound. Um, say, for example, the letter S. They see that letter or they see that symbol and they associate it with s sound. Um, but when a, uh, when a blind person or a person who is visually impaired, when they are taught using audio and large print, visual, um, they are not, their visual cortex is not getting a lot of information taken in, uh, primarily because they're like, if they're using audio, the audio doesn't use the visual cortex at all. It just uses the auditory part of the brain. And it's basically, you know, attuned to listening, you know, pitches and um, uh, timbre, things, things like that, frequencies and stuff, um, how loud something is, how soft something is, that's what the auditory picks up. But, um, 
But if you're reading through text, just through audio, you have no context of what you're reading. You don't know where the commas are. You don't know how the words are spelled. You don't know anything about punctuations or capitals or really nothing. And the reason is, is because you don't have that visual cortex element. And so with Braille, um, what I have learned through uh, another video on the internet, which is actually very fascinating, and I've actually experienced a little taste of this when I was at university, but when, when an adult is learning Braille as an adult, um, if they have had really no strong sense for the audio cortex, that part of the brain will just kind of go into dormant mode. Not that it'll just like die. It'll just go into dormant because there's no information being brought in that way. Um, the student has a hard time spelling. The student doesn't know any, I mean, doesn't, but they, they have a hard time with writing, composition, things like that. Um, but once a student begins to learn Braille and like reads Braille, their audio cortex comes like it comes out of dormant mode and it says, oh, we have we have visual input we can put, you know, we could start using. And so when a Braille student is feeling a specific combination of dots in Braille, obviously, um, and they're being taught that that specific combination of dots says B sound, um, then your visual cortex is actually going to be creating neurons because you're taking in information through the fingertip and that information is going through into the visual cortex. Um, and literally like the student, I don't know if this works for, um, other people or the other blind or visually impaired people, but I'm like banking my buck that it would be, <laughs> they are seeing the braille symbol of what they're feeling in their mind's eye. Um, when I was at university, I was, uh, I was, I just learned about the Braille music code and I was so excited. I, you know, took my old, like really old school piano books and I, you know, started transcribing them just to have practice and to try to learn them, um, you know, learn the actual how to read music using these old school books. Um, and this is like, while well, I was still a full-time music student. So obviously I didn't have a lot of time for Braille study. Um, but it was something I do remember trying to put a lot of effort into, uh, things were kind of going downhill with my music studies anyways, based, you know, from my, um, basically kind of like my crucifixion experience, um, check out the history of my music performance or my music history and you want to learn more, more about that. Um, but when I was learning, just dabbling around with this, I was playing with the Bach, uh, pardon me, it's Petzl, Petzl. Um, he, uh, wrote a couple of minuets that are a trippy, often, thought of Bach wrote them, but I think scholars have said, no, he didn't write these. Um, but Petzl, um, wrote these two minuets, one in G major, the other in G minor. And I was reading through them at the piano. I had one hand reading the Braille and the other hand reading, um, I mean, reading, <laughs> playing on the piano, obviously. Um, and I would have to switch hands when I needed to read the other hand. So when I would put the hands together, 
I'm solely relying on what are here. And the more interesting thing is, as I was putting the hands together, I could see the braille symbol of what it was I was playing in my mind's eye. So like if I was playing um, like so far me, if I was playing those pitches, um, I could I could see those pitches in my mind's eye in the braille code. It was really cool because I never experienced anything like that. And um, I often like thought like what would what would have happened if I'd learned this sooner? Like braille music and braille literacy. Um, but it didn't happen, so that's kind of where things are at. But going back to that visual cortex thing, my fingers were taking in information through the neurons and all that stuff, sending it to the brain, and it was saying, okay, that's one, four, five is this pitch. It's do or, you know, I don't have perfect pitch, so I can't sing the actual pitch. Um, but it's basically like I would play these pitches and I could see the braille symbols in my mind's eye. It was very, very fascinating. Um, I, I, I was like, it was like the most coolest thing that I'd ever experienced. And um, I remember when I was at university, my piano teacher was always telling me, look at the notes, look at the notes. You need to see the notes. It's like, well, I can't see the notes because I'm blind. But if I had Braille, I could see the notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, basically, that's, I, I don't know, it kind of, like kind of a hodgepodge of a little talking thing here. Um, but basically with the, bra with, with the Braille, um, we're taking a step back from like reading words and we're actually learning. Well, I'm learning. I mean, I think teacher already knows how words are put together. At least I hope he does. Um, but we are putting words, we're putting letter sounds and we're making words and we're learning how these different letter sounds comprise into families and hopefully it'll help with reading faster because I'm learning groups of families of words like at, like A-T, if you put a B, bat, cat, fat, that, um, I'm trying to think, Matt, Pat, uh, what other ones, Wat, no, I don't think that's a word, <laughs> I don't know, um, Lat, no, that's not a word either, I can't think of any other ones, um, but basically all those words that, like, end with an at sound, um, that's kind of what we're doing. And we're kind of learning, we're kind of going through this um, with the different letters. And we've only done three lessons, so there's not much there. But um, I do have homework and I need to, to get that done. So that's pretty much everything on the board uh, behind me talks about everything that we covered. Um, Teacher and I didn't specifically put that up together, but um, w there was something I did after the fact so that I could kind of see what concepts were covered within each lesson. Um, and I think doing something like this in the future, like in class, would be um, a good idea uh, because then, you know, it'd kind of be like a precursor to, you know, the lessons itself. Um, but that's pretty much the stuff that we have, that we have done. Um, for homework, I will be rewriting the lessons, um, hopefully a lot better than how I wrote them out in class. Um, 
and then I will read them. I won't be reading them. Well, I'll be reading for a teacher because he'll, he'll, he'll see the uh, video, but um, I'll be reading them. Um, and obviously, like, the first couple lessons are going to be super easy, but again, the whole point of this is to get the finger to connect the braille dots to the sounds. Like, my brain knows what these sounds are for the most part, but I need to get the finger to read these as sounds and not as individual letters, because that's where I'm getting hung up right now. Um, and then obviously, you know, why does the sound make this sound like why head and bed are spelt two different ways, but they both have the eh sound. Yeah. Stuff like that really throws me. So hopefully this book will help cover with that. Um, there are like little reader books that go along with the, with the, main textbook here um we are going to probably incorporate them as they um come up i think the first one doesn't like isn't formally introduced until lesson 14 so if we're only on lesson three we have a long way to go yet but um there's a whole bunch of those that go along with it um i don't have a physical copy, but I recently saw that you can buy them off the internet. So I might add that to my library. Um, but yeah, so, um, that is kind of what we're doing for reading. Uh, so I will post a video, obviously to the reading, to the, uh, homework assignment. And I'm going to also do a, a little video on, uh, the method of writing that I'm using, I will be using what's called the slate and stylus, and that will also be posted here at the end screen. You can check that out. Um, and then I'll also post probably reading by dots or something, some other playlist or something, but yeah. All right. Um, that covers, that's the long and short end of what we're doing for reading, um, and why, and all the ins and outs of it. If you want to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget, ring the notification bell for all notifications.